What's up, fellers? Welcome to another 239 Flies installment. We've got a couple of very special guests with us this evening. We've got Captain Debbie Hansen, she fishes too, and world famous Joe Mahler, president of the, well, I guess crea founder, creator of the, the slip. The slip, it wasn't the slip, slip lift. It is the slip lift. It's the slip yep. lift. Yep. I think we were actually talking to each other through uh, possibly a fishbowl when, uh, Maybe. when we, yeah, that's what the problem was. But anyway, um, we changed some plans this evening. We were going to do a, a fly tying night. However, like, yay, COVID. So um, we uh, decided that it might just be a better idea if we decided, or if we shot a, a little 239 Flies uh, DIY video for you. Got a DIY kit coming, and Joe is going to lead us on tying the, the popper with the Krebs jig. That's right. Yeah. Well, take me by the hand, good sir. Okay. I guess we have to stay six feet apart, but okay. take me by the metaphorical hand. Okay. <laughs> and we are going to tie some uh, poppers today using the, the Krebs popper jig. Available, of course, at 239 Flies. We've got like Everything three of those. Everything you see here is available at 239 Flies. Um, it's, a, it's a really pretty simple list of materials. We have some flash. We have all manner of, uh, of tail material here. I prefer uh, Finnish Raccoon or um, the, uh, the... Raccoon or Arctic, Arctic Fox. Arctic Fox. Arctic Fox. Uh, those, the, those are really nice materials because they compact. And you'll, you'll see why that's important because we need to get it inside the, the popper body. I don't care for marabou because um, it, doesn't, it doesn't last very long. It doesn't, it doesn't hold up. Um, I actually hit a possum on my way over here. Is it cool if I use absolutely. that? Absolutely. Roadkill works too. Bring it in. Okay. Yeah. All right. Bring it in. Uh, craft fur works, works just fine. But the Arctic Fox really uh, is, is what I like because when it gets wet, it still maintains its integrity and still has a, a bit of a bushy um, profile. So the, we, we have the tail. Then we have, uh, most importantly, we have these, these cylinders. I'll pull, pull a bigger one out the here. The old foam cylinder. The foam cylinders, we're going to tie on 3 8 today because that's the most common size. It's, um, there's two sizes of the jigs. Actually, there's three, but the two most common are the, the bass and panfish and bass and saltwater. And there's a crossover. Each one of them contains a 3 8 uh, cylinder okay. cutter. So uh, that's important. It's going gonna, it's gonna to look like this. And um, it comes in whatever colors you want, white, green. We got the rainbow. Whatever. And, and if we have time, we're even going to show you how to make a, a two-toned uh, version. So. I would make a four-tone version. You could do it. You can do it. You, uh, super glue, razor blade, um, and uh, pretty simple. This sounds like bodily harm. Yep. Okay. Um, let's start out. We're going to cut our body, and, and um, so you can you can take that one, and I'm going to take this one here. Take your foam cylinder. Okay. And so each one of these, it, it's kind of neat. It comes with a there's a, a magnet right here. And you can keep your pin. It comes with a needle. Uh, if you're like me, you'll you'll lose that pretty quickly. So it it pays to you need a needle. You need the needle. The needle is an integral part of the, this whole the operation. The needle, needle is. And I got to tell you, I'm I'm the kind of person that doesn't really read instructions. So I had it for a year before I realized it takes. We're, you, we're yeah, lacking something yeah, here. You're, you're lacking something. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put the cylinder in the in the jig like this. You'll see on the side there is a a hole. So I'm going to stick the needle in the hole and push it on through. And that's going to keep it from rotating or sliding. Um, the next thing I'm going to... Very important, don't have your finger on the other end of that. You're going to need a razor blade there. Ah, speaking of sharp objects. Yeah, you've got a razor blade, I right? Okay, so then I'm, I'm, going to turn, I'm going to turn this over. And the first cut, and it's really important to use, uh, don't get cheap on the razor blades. It, you'll get about six poppers out of a razor blade, get a new one. Uh, I buy the double edge and just break them in half with pliers. Yes. And uh, so it, it's... Don't break them in half with your teeth. No. Very important. Absolutely not. So we're going we're gonna to... I don't know if you're worried there. about breaking them in half with your teeth, Debbie, or not, but sorry, Joe. <laughs> All right. Now we're just going to put this here. Keep the, keep the razor blade up against the wood, and you should just be able to push it right through. You get a little, little bit of a lip there. And it's gonna it's gonna cut really really flush like that. The next cut is going to be this this bevel right here. And I'm gonna again I'm gonna lay the lay the razor blade right on the wood and make that cut. 
And then the third cut that I call the guillotine cut, is we're going to put it right in that slot. And go all the way down. Okay, so then we'll we'll take the take the needle out, push it through just like the old Play-Doh Fun Factory. <laughs> Are you old Let's enough go. to know about that? Hell yeah, I know about the Play-Doh Fun okay. Factory. And so there we have our there we have our our body. Um, so now we have to cut a slit in here, and this is this is maybe the the diciest part of all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, and I'm going to do this so Nick can see it also, sure. and I'm going to cover up half of it, just like that, and rotate the blade so then I can make a cut on the underneath side. And just take a little care, and we're just going to make sure that that is lined up. And I'm going to cut all the way through to the, to the bevel, right to the bevel. All right, so and we're it's going to look like that in the front. It's going to look like oh, that. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. And we're not going to use that entire that tire, entire slit, but it is important to have it there. So don't go all the way through the fly. Don't Only go, go all halfway, the way through the fly. about, about right. halfway. And then we'll take the blade out. Now here's a here's a little trick that that I like to do. I have a, a pretty large uh, bodkin here, so I'm just going to take the bodkin and push it up into the uh, into the foam like that, and that's going to fatigue the foam. And it's and when we're done, we're ready to use it here and five minutes or so, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be nice and open for us. Okay. You can also use your needle, correct? Yeah, you can put, it in, you can put the needle in there, but that's, that's perfect. As soon as I can find this damn thing. I got it. This, I, I swear I've tied flies before. Oop, oop, oop. I got it. There we go. All right. So then I'm going to take the, we're going to get our hook. Uh, the hook that I like for, for these poppers is the Gamagatsu uh, B10S, available at 239. Those are, of course. that's the truth. Everything here is so sharp. Why? It is. It Gosh. is. And you know, one thing to consider when you're, when you're tying these is the weight of the hook. Um, it'll, if, you, if you put it on, on a heavier hook, it's, it's not going to have the same action. So I like the lightest and strongest hook. I think the stinger, at, the, the stinger yeah. shape is makes it really strong for these are good hooks for top waters 100 yeah. percent agree okay so there we go now we're gonna we're gonna start the thread just above where the point of of the hook is and let's do about three wraps and that's that's going to be good enough good save good save oh we're starting to back here trim that off yep that's good and we'll we'll just put a half hitch in there just in case we we break in case it. we break our our thread. Yeah, important to always work away, always up and over, up and over. I'm just always. I'm blown away at the amount of instruction that uh, I'm getting here this evening. This is by far the most informative fly. Actually, this is either one or two. This could be the most informative fly tying night we've ever had. Second only to when you came in here and did the the straw boss. Right. Normally, I just like we just kind of get drunk and and, yeah. and hopefully don't cut ourselves. And see, I, I you get, don't want to drink with all right. of this going on. No, this and is I dangerous. Get, I get drunk before I came. That's so that's, I'm, that's, I'm much more organized that's, that way. When that's, there's razor blades involved. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so let's and so we'll we'll pick a color. I've got this. Uh, what did I choose here? I got I got green. So let's do something kind of interesting. We'll do a, a chartreuse with a bit of purple on it. All right. And, um, and so. Um, it's important not to not to overdo the tail, and I don't know if you can see that, but this um, this Arctic fox will compress really nicely. And I'm going to I'm going to measure that now. Uh, I don't I don't really want a lot of material. I I, I really want to keep the uh, the bulk here to a minimum because I'm gonna I'm gonna have to to get that uh, rubber body around all this. So. I'm going to measure this pretty carefully and, and trim it off so I just have enough to get about four. Are you leaving the guard hairs in there? Absolutely. That's the best part. I love guard hairs. And four or five wraps will do it. Straight out the back. Straight out the back. Next step, we're going to take a, a very small amount, I'm, and I mean like maybe maybe five strands of this of this polar flash. Do you have your need flash? Yeah, I do. Okay. Oh. 
Okay, so and I'm just going to I'm just going to fold this this flash in like so, and we'll we'll just we'll just wrap Thank that. Thank you. And then just make sure that 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 sort of goes to to each side. Is the bandage on your hand from uh, trying to tie one too quickly? Like how many stitches are in there? No, that was from breaking razor blades up for you today. Oh gosh. <laughs> I've never done that before. I, I've done a, I've broken a thousand, so I, yeah. <laughs> so, no, absolutely, and I bled like a stuck pig. Just gonna ask about ten times. Joe oh, taking, yeah. Joe taking one for the team. That's right. Okay, so do a, this slowly. The, the secondary color, I like to do it. I like to do it shorter, and a, and a little bit less material. You of course can do it any way you want, and um, but see, I, I like. So make sure that the That's tips are going, going oh, down. I like the way that looks. And so you tie this in a little shorter. Yeah, a little bit shorter, just a little tuft and just a just a tuft. What a great unit of measurement a tuft it, is. It is. It is. We don't. Grandma's pinch of salt. <laughs> yeah. A dash. Okay. A smidge. And you can you can see how very little material I have on there. Um, Helen Shaw always said that you could you should be able to tie any material on in three wraps. Any tie in any material with three wraps. Three wraps should hold it. And I'm just gonna put, I'm gonna be very, very stingy with the glue here, but I'm just gonna put just a just a little bit on on the tips and a little bit on that on that thread. Okay. So that's our that's our tail. I'll let you catch up there and I was gonna say this is uh How's that? Looks nice. Good, not great. That's how I live my life. There you go. So let's just put oh, just a little. a little bit where the where the thread connects to the uh, to the hook. But just we're we're going to use more glue later. But this is just a. Can I smell this glue now, or do I do that later? You can. can That's the best part about fly tying. Sure. You know, so the half hitch is is really like on a computer saving your work. Okay. It's just it you know just do it. If you think about it, just do it. And that way, if you break the thread, it's pretty easy. You're safe. Yep, you're safe. Okay, it's so a good now, analogy. so the next thing we're going to do, is, and and I've gotten to be, I used to hate weed guards until I found one that I really liked, and now I tie them on every fly I tie. So, and so what I do, the best way to make weed guards, I take uh, for for this size, I'm using 15 pound fluorocarbon. Okay. Now I'll get a I'll get a spool of fluorocarbon, and I'll cut it up. I'll cut up about a hundred pieces so it fits in this. And then I'll boil that for five minutes, and the result is that they come that they'll they'll come out just straight as an arrow. All the memory's gone. How did you, how did you figure this out? Was uh, this just a, because that's I'm gonna put this in the pen in a pen and boil it for 15 minutes. Yeah, I mean I, I that I'll, is I'll get this pack so tight that they're that's that's can, impressive. And then it, it boils and it, it comes out. Or you can throw it into you can throw it into the dishwasher for a cycle. Okay. Yeah. Or you, could you leave it in your pocket and wash it with the other pens that you're washing with your you, pants? You could. Because inevitably yeah. that's where all the pens end up. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so I'm going to take, take this section and I'm going to take these, these uh, crimper, what would we call these, flat, flat pliers. Uh, man, crimper sounds good. Jeweler's crimper. Pliers. Yeah, <laughs> jeweler's pliers. We, we have these here, right? We're getting them, Absolutely. yes. Absolutely. Yes. Available at 239 flies. And so I'm going to take about a, about a 32nd of an inch of that, and I'm going to fold that over. Okay, and it's going to make a letter L. All right, so I'm going to we'll put this aside for right now. Now I'm going to, I'm going to turn my, my uh, hook upside down here. And then I'm going to, once again, I'm going to use that, that glue, and I'm going to put just a tiny amount, just enough to just discolor the hook. Hooks upside down, so I, and I'm going to I'm going to wind forward. And you notice, I don't know if you can see that or not, but as I go forward, I'm chasing this bead forward. I'm chasing that little bead, and when I get there, I'm going to take the the L that I've made, and with the foot going forward. And we're just going to catch that, get a couple wraps around it that way, maybe two in the back, and we'll 
We've got, we've got some super glue on there so we don't really have to worry about whip finishing. And at that point, we're going to cut the thread. We're, we're done with the, with the tying aspect of it. It's oh. pretty good. Okay. Sorry, I had a little, a little thread malfunction here. Okay, I'll wait up for you. Um, don't wait for me, Joe. I'm gonna okay. Be, I'm gonna be, I'll be with you momentarily. All right. So now the, the next thing I'm going to do, and this is, this is really important because this is where it can go, go really wrong, is I'm gonna put a bead of glue on the top and a bead of glue on each side. I'm not gonna put it on the bottom. Okay. Okay, and, it, and it's gonna be a really, just kind of a, a, a thin bead. It doesn't really have to be a lot. You're using the Loctite gel? Loctite gel. It Available works pretty good for the foam. Years. Works pretty good on the foam uh, it does. poppers. Yeah. We tie a couple of other uh, top secret flies with this foam, and uh, that's the that's the go-to glue. And you can just take your needle and just just move that move that glue around there. And so then we're going to take the the body, which is now kind of relaxed and easy to do. I'm going to start by putting the I'm going to put the back on, end on first and move forward. Now, I've, I've got a few seconds here. If you can, if you can see what that looks like, um, and then I'm going to I'm going to squeeze it tight. I'm going to hold it until the count of twenty. I'm a little nervous. I don't think I can count that high. And you can see. Now, if you if you put a if you use bucktail or other other materials, um, you're you're going to find that it's going to be really hard to close there. You may end up with a gap underneath. And um, then you can just take your, you can take your needle and just kind of, if there's, if there's excess glue on this one, there's not. Now, one thing that, that I really like is I get these, these um, floss threaders. You can get them at, at Walgreens and they come in a package like that. Floss threader. Yeah, and it's for threading dental floss, so you okay. can floss your teeth. I use them for bobbin threaders, so I always have one handy. I hang, I hang them on my thing. But it's also a great tool for cleaning the eye, the glue out of the eyes. Ah. Some some people use a feather, but the feather is only good for about you, two uses. And they're like fifty bucks for a you know a, a, a cape of them. So right, yeah, yeah. And so that's that's where we are so far. You can see now. Um, we're gonna get we're gonna get pretty fancy on this one, and I'm gonna take these these. Let's try. Let's grab that. Just to put those anywhere. Yep. I'm gonna take these plastic dumbbell eyes. Dumbbell or barbell? Uh, they're really mono, more like barbell. I would say barbell. Yeah. I think they're closer to a barbell than they are a dumbbell. Yep. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna clip off one of the one of the balls. Does anybody else want to laugh? Oh my! Because I kind of want to. But it's got to be right up next to. Right up next to the ball. Yes. Yep. Okay, and we're going to do that with each. So we, we it's going to take, it's going to take two. Um, it's going to take two uh, balls to tie this fly. No, it's going to take four balls. Four but balls cut, to tie this fly. But we cut two of the balls off. Okay. Um, so anyhow, so I, I've got these. The, the it's the ball with the <clears throat> with the post on it. With the stem. With the stem. <laughs> <laughs> with the stem. Now I'm going to take because we're all in third grade. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to I'm going to take my I'm going to take go back to my needle, and I'm going to put it right where I think the eye should be. Just like so. We'll pull it on through, and run it back through again. We want we want to make that we want to kind of bore that out just a little bit so we have a nice and you can you can see the hole forming there okay then i'm going to take just a just a drop of this glue right right on top of the right on top of the hole i have glued my fingers together we've done it and then i'm going to take the stem mm -hmm. and Easier said than done, I guess. But it's a really nice touch. That was the first thing go. I noticed about uh, about these poppers that you were tying was the uh, the eyes on them. I'm a big proponent of eyes. Yeah, and eyes are fine. I I, I happen to think with top waterflies that they're seeing the silhouette. Yeah. And so a painted eye is kind of worthless. But this we actually have 
we have a silhouette. We got a little something going yeah. on there. Yeah. And it helps make the fly a little more expensive. So it sure and it's just another material. And, and that's and why we're here. I, I love materials. I told Nick I was gonna make this popper as expensive as, as humanly possible. So you got four materials here, Joe. Okay. Same same thing on the other side. And we'll stick that in. And the the glue's not quite dry yet, so we're gonna we'll just push them in. Count to ten. And there we have it. You can see, you can see how it, maybe if you were underneath it, how how it might get a, a really nice um, bulging eye silhouette. How many ball jokes can we make in one fly? All right. So um, I like silicone uh, legs. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was just, right. I was just yeah. okay. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. You're gotcha. Okay, and so, uh, so we're going to go back to our needle. I'm going to thread my, my legs on here. One is going to be good for the size. You could add a second set if you want. Now, if you notice, there, that, that hole that we did earlier is, is still there, and I'm just going to find it. Push right through. And now, the, the reason that we cut all the way up to the top and, and made that slit, well, there's glue in there now. So when I pull these through, these glues, these legs are going to be glued in from the inside, so I don't, I don't have to put glue on the on the outside. Clip that off, and then I'm just to to trim the legs. I'm just going to push these up here like this, and 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 just make one cut, and they'll be they'll be perfectly even. That's a good looking little fly right there. I um, and there you have it. I definitely, I put the, the eyes in the wrong spot. So now I'm going back. Damn. So, so fishing the fly is, is kind of an interesting thing. I, um, I see an awful lot of people, and I, I fish a lot of freshwater. Yeah. Debbie fishes a lot of freshwater. And there's just a whole lot of times where people pull the, the fly right away from the fish because they don't see it. So when I, when I fish a popper, you know, you're, you're going to know if something hits it. So I would say watch, watch a circle of five feet around the fly, and you'll see, it. You'll see the water swell, or you'll see, you'll see something. Maybe you see a, a, a lily pad move, or, a, or you know. Or a wake coming up behind the popper. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> what do you do, Debbie, when you see that? Freak out and pull, your, uh, pull the fly no, out of there? You let the fish come up and grab it. You don't trout set. <laughs> yeah, he's already interested. Already going to eat it. Um, and you know, some fish like like cichlids and and peacock bass. Sometimes they'll just come up and, and just sit under it for a long time. Yeah. And so watch those legs move. Watch the legs move. Yep. Yeah, and it, it surprises me sometimes if I'm if I'm talking to somebody and I'm not and I'm not fishing and the fly's just laying there how something will blow up on it yeah. after it's been sitting out there a few minutes. That looks great, Nick. I, I, I went with double the amount of legs because I'm extra, yeah. you know? Yeah, well, there you go. That and was... you, can, you can also put a second, a second hole. Now, I don't, I don't have any, but I'm gonna give you the tip of the day here. Oh, enlighten us. Okay, so if you, if you take just a bit of fingernail polish, it could be, it could be white, it could be fluorescent, whatever, okay. and put a, put a dab on the end of it, or you could use epoxy. And so you end up with a little ball on the end of the, uh, of the rubber leg. Okay. It'll move more. That's a good when, tip. When it moves through the water, that ball will actually, it'll, it'll actually make, it, make it wiggle more. I just want to tie this in like a cigarette color scheme now, like the orange front for the butt and then the, the yep. white back. Well, let me show you how to do that. All right. Okay. That was a good set. That wasn't even intentional, by the way. That was, that was organic. And if you notice, they're, they're, they're nice and clean, really nice clean cuts on each, on each end. So I'm going to find the best end, and I'm just going to put a, a dab there, and I'm going to just work that in, make it really smooth. We don't want, a, we don't want a whole lot of glue on there, but we want every, every bit covered. And then I'm going to take the other one, and I'm going to just line it up, and, and as long as you keep it moving, it's, it won't stick. Mm -hmm. And just keep pressing it together. Count to ten. Just roll off the excess. 
glue your fingers together. That's the funnest part right there. <laughs> and, th and there we have it. Is this what you were talking about? Yep. So that's our, that's our cigarette color here. Our cigarette color scheme. All right. So now we've got this really long popper body. And I'm not going to be as efficient as I, as I should with all this. We're we hate efficiency go. around here. Right. Okay, it's fly fishing. I'm, How efficient gonna, do you want to be? I'm going to waste a little bit of material to show you here. We'll give that just a second. Actually, that does look like a cigarette, doesn't it? It absolutely does. Wow. Good. That was uh, <clears throat> that's a, that's a Daryl Lee color scheme right there. Is it? Yep. Okay. So now, what's, what do you like, Debbie? Dark color forward or dark color back? I like dark color forward. Okay. That's <clears throat> so we're going to put the dark color in forward, and I'm going to, I'm going to stop it just so, just right at the, I don't know if you can see it, just peeking out of that, of that little bend. This is one of those where you're going to be a lot better at it the second time around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yep. Can't wait for Rico to slap all these right off the vise. Okay. So, again, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to. We'll make that cut. Cut the the bevel, and then make the guillotine cut. So, where did you put the um, the color the the color line? There we go. Okay. So the. Whatever the front color is, so it's, it's lined it's, up with the bevel. It's just, just peeking out. Yep. Gotcha. Just peeking out. These are pretty cool little jigs. And there's our body. You know what? It, it really, I, I used to tie cork body jigs, and the, the, um, the, the styrofoam ones uh, came out, and I used those for a while, but if you throw them up against a concrete wall or a piling or something, they they're, shatter. They're toast. They shatter. And so, um, you know, you can, you can buy the cork ones, but they're, they're not really made very well. Um, so this really revolutionized poppers for me. I've been using this about five years. Well, thanks for, uh, thanks for making the most out of this evening. I know it wasn't okay. quite exactly how we planned it up uh, uh, a month ago, but I got to tell you, this was, uh, this was a pretty kick-ass outcome. Absolutely. So we'll do this again. Absolutely. All right. We'll do it. Do it again. <laughs> Cheers.